John chapter 21 and verse 15. John 21, 15. Say amen if you have it. Amen. And the word of God declares, And when they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. And Jesus said, feed my lambs. And again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? And he answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus had asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. God, we pray this morning that by your spirit, you will cause us to gain a greater understanding of your word that will reflect in a life that glorifies you. We ask it in Jesus' name. Everyone said amen. amen and amen. Before you're seated this morning, go ahead and tell somebody we're still learning how to love Jesus. You may be seated in the house of God. Amen. Glory to God. We have uh, spent the last four Sundays dealing with the subject matter of loving Jesus. We've looked at four different people who uh, have loved Jesus in different ways. And uh, some have been some women, some uh, other, a man who walked and talked with Jesus along the way. One of his disciples and the expressions of love and the different ways that they were called upon and give an opportunity to demonstrate their love for him. And so we want to conclude this morning with this last message in this series called Loving Jesus. And I want to deal with the subject of sacrificial love. Would you say that with me? Sacrificial love. You know, love is really not love until there is some form of sacrifice attached to it. Yeah. A lot of people can say they love you. A lot of people can uh, feign uh, love. But until you're called upon to demonstrate that, it really doesn't necessarily show up uh, as demonstrative love or sacrificial love. We know that the greatest form of love was Jesus Christ who gave himself for us, sacrificed his life on the cross of Calvary so that you and I could have eternal life. If you're glad about it, say amen. amen. But along the way, Jesus encounters people who are called upon to demonstrate their love for him. Now, this story that we read just a moment ago deals with the fact that Jesus has already risen from the dead and he is appearing to the disciples as he said that he would before he ascended. And while he was waiting for them as the, on the shore, he said, tell the disciples that I will see them in Galilee. And this is the picture that we have here. The Bible says that they were back at their old routine. Peter especially was back doing what he used to do uh, bef after, before the resurrection and before he met Jesus. Now he was back to being a fisherman. The Bible tells us, he said, I go fishing. Why? Because he had become disillusioned. Because he didn't realize the fullness of the word of God. He did not believe fully in his heart that Jesus in fact had risen from the dead. That Jesus was going to do exactly what he said he was going to do. And so Peter needs a new lesson. Oh hallelujah. How many of you are glad that God is always ready to give us a new lesson? Amen. The Bible says that Peter said, I'm going fishing. I'm going back to my old life. I'm going back to my old routine. I'm going back to my old habits. And so he does. And the Bible says that Jesus appears on the shore and the disciples, some of the disciples are in a boat and they're fishing. And when they see Jesus on the shore, they run to him. And Peter jumps in the water and swims to him. And I've got a great message on that that I'm not preaching today. This is a different one. But they get together with Jesus and John's gospel tells us that Jesus had made breakfast for them. Now we know that that was a breakfast of fish and probably some bread that 
uh, they, they had there and Jesus had brought some and, you know, he didn't have to do much to, to, to scare up some fish and bread. Amen. He's a miracle worker. Hallelujah. Uh, he's a provider. Amen. He can make something out of nothing. Uh, he made something out of me. Hallelujah. Jesus has made breakfast for them. I, I suspect that if he would do that for you or for me, he probably would deal with it based on the culture of the day. So, you know, if he was making breakfast for you, it might be some ham and eggs. It might be some grits and bacon. Uh, might be some country gravy over biscuits. Uh, I'm making somebody hungry in here. Uh, let me make the Latinos hungry. Some huevos rancheros, amen. And some gallo pinto. And aha, uh -huh, I got you now. All right, praise God. Praise God. But whatever it is, he was always ready to feed those who look to him. And so he feeds them. And then when they have finished eating, the Bible says in verse 15 that a dialogue occurs and begins between Jesus and Peter. Breakfast is over. Jesus is now going to test Peter's love for him. And when he does, he's going to formally restore him by a threefold, three times, mentioned three times, a commission and an order to feed his sheep. Three times Jesus asks Peter a question. You find it in verse 15, and you find it in 16, and then again in 17. He asks him, do you love me? Why would Jesus ask Peter three times? Why would he ask him that nature of a question? Didn't he know that Peter loved him? Well, yes, of course. Jesus knows everything. You know, that's a good affirmation. You ought to say that with me. Come on. Jesus knows. Uh, say it again. Jesus knows. Hallelujah. Bible says he knows what was in the heart of man. No one needed to tell him anything. So what's the purpose of the, of the question that he poses to Peter three times? I will tell you the purpose of it. The purpose of it was this. Peter had denied Jesus three times, just like Jesus said that he would. Before he went to the cross, Jesus told him that he was going to die. And Peter said, no, it cannot be. He said, and I will never deny you. Jesus said, you'll all fall away from me. Peter said, not me. I'll go to the cross with you. Jesus said, before the rooster crows, he said, you'll deny me three times. We find that at the trial of Jesus as he stood among the intelligentsia and he stood before the legal experts among the Jews. And they examined him and found no fault in him. The Bible tells us that Peter stood outside of the high priest's house. And as he did, there were three different occasions when people came to him and said, I know you. I saw you. You were with him. I can tell by your accent. I can tell by your demeanor. I, I can tell by the way you carry yourself that you were with Jesus. You're one of those disciples. And three different times there is the occasion for him to be questioned. And three different times just as Jesus said that he would. Peter misses the opportunity to stand up for Jesus and to witness for him. And instead he denies him three different times. I'm not with him. I was never with him. I don't even know the man. And the third time he said, and if I even know him, let me be cursed. The Bible says that after the third denial, Jesus looked at Peter and Peter saw him and that Peter wept bitter tears. Now he has an opportunity to question him, but for the purpose of reinstatement, for the purpose of restoration. He's going to bring Peter to a place 
of exact understanding of who he is. You see, when God does something in your life, when God brings you to a place of self-examination, when God brings you to a place of questioning, when he brings you to a place of examining your own priorities and your own thoughts and your own values, when he brings you down to square one and begins to deal with your heart, he's not doing it for the purpose of condemnation. He's doing it for the purpose of revelation. And out of revelation comes transformation. And out of transformation comes total and complete restoration. God in his dealings with us examines us like Jesus examined Peter. Peter had assumed his loyalty. He assumed that he could be counted on. But in fact, he denies him three times. And Jesus in his mercy gives Peter three opportunities, three chances to redeem himself. Peter, for every time you denied me, for every time you rejected the opportunity, for every time that you missed the moment, I'm giving you an opportunity today to declare your love for me. So he takes Peter back to the beginning with the question, do you love me? He leads Peter through an experience that removes the guilt of his denial. You need to understand something, however, today. We look at that word love in the English language and it looks like it's all the same. And we wonder, well, why did Jesus ask him three times, do you love me? Why did Peter respond three times, Lord, you know I love you. Let me help you here quickly. It's important that we understand the Greek. The first two times in verse 15 and 16, Jesus asked Peter this question, do you love me? Using the Greek word agapao. Do you truly love me? Do you sincerely love me? Is there a divine love that you have for me that's self-sacrificing? Peter responds, said, yes, you know I love you, but the word that he uses for love is not agapao, it's the word phileo. You know I'm your friend. The third time Jesus asks him in verse 7 time, verse 17, do you love me? He uses then the word phileo. Do Peter, I've already examined you twice. I've already asked you if you love me divinely. I've already asked you if you're willing to sacrifice yourself for me. And so Peter, I know your answer. I discern your heart. So Peter, I asked you the third time, but this time I ask you, are you even my friend? Peter responds with the same word in Greek. There's a sense of pathos in what he says. There, there's a sense of sadness and resolve and resign in what he says because he says, Lord, you know all things. You know me. You know everything about me. I really wanted to be able to say that I loved you, agapao. I, I really wanted to be able to say that, but the three different times I couldn't, and so all I could say was, I'm your friend. I haven't gone into that level yet of love that you're asking me for. I haven't stepped into that arena yet of the kind of love that you demonstrated for me on the cross. I, I'm not there yet. But I love you as best I can right now. With everything that's in me, with my frailties, with my weaknesses, with my shortcomings, I love you the best I can. 
There's no need for me to lie to you. There's no need for me to try and pull the wool over your eyes or to fool you or come to you with a big Bible to make it look like I'm really spiritual or wear a Jesus pin on my lapel or put a Jesus bumper sticker on my car. There's no reason. There's no point. You know me. You know my frame. You know my dust. 